me pass from the technical to some of the psychological aspects of the cobalt bomb. As long as there are men who believe they can hurt others without being hurt themselves, wars will be made. As long as there are psychopaths willing to risk glorious annihilation to win their twisted ends, wars will be made. But neither of these satisfactions is possible with the cobalt bomb, whose megatonnage is secondary to the fact that it will rain down deadly radiation on the Earth for periods of 50 years or more. And what I'm saying, gentlemen, is this. The cobalt bomb, more than any other weapon already stockpiled or still in development, promises to be the most effective war deterrent. By making war impracticable to those most drawn to it as a means of settling impasses between nations, peace will inevitably result. Thank you. Better see what lunch is fine. Man is a giant. A giant. I understand he's been nominated for the Fermi Award. Yes, and I think Clay's point of view is the only sane one. Come. Oh, come in, Red. I'm just calming down a bit. Public speaking isn't really my forte. You'll have a hard time convincing me of that, Doctor. Tom, I think you know Dr. Sorbin. Oh, yes, we met at uh, White Sands. I thought the briefing was a great success. Yes, you certainly presented an eloquent case on your project. Everyone was most impressed. Oh, thank you. That we need the cobalt bomb, that we must have it, goes without saying. My only question, Doctor, is where is it? I'm sorry, I'm going to have to be blunt. We're engaged in an arms race, and we can't afford to fall behind. Now, it's our opinion that we haven't been pushing ahead fast enough on this project. Dr. Sorbin, you must know Dr. Clay and his staff. I'm not questioning the devotion of his staff, but the size of it. Doctor, you've literally been running a one-man operation here for the last two years. It goes without saying. I have no quarrel with the quality of your work, but we're going to have to divide the project up among more research teams. We've got to get the job done. Dr. Sorbin, am I in charge here or not? And if I am, I must be allowed to push this thing through in my own way. Importing more research teams is just going to cost a whale of a lot more money without any appreciable gain in speed. The more men that are involved, the greater the chances of factionism, intramural competition, and breakdowns in communication. And what about my people who've already given so much? If you pull the rug out from under them now, I can't be responsible for what'll happen to their morale. Oh, you <laughs> just leave us alone a little longer, Doctor. That's the safest way. And in the long run, it'll be the fastest way, too. I wish I had your powers of persuasion. Or at least the power to resist them. Well, <laughs> we'll get the job done as fast as we can, I promise you that. I'll stand over him with a whip. Doctor, you'll have to make a breakthrough within the next few weeks, or I'll be forced to go over your head. Please don't disappoint me. You've been doing remarkable work, and I have no wish to interrupt it. Thank you for your understanding. Good luck, Doctor. Well, Tom, I'll be looking over your shoulder for the next few weeks. Let me know if I can do anything to help you. Don't worry, Ren. We'll make it. Six o'clock already? Five of. Mm. Mrs. Clay asked me to remind you. Remind me of what? You and Mrs. Clay are having Mr. Burke to dinner tonight to celebrate his new book. Oh, no. Well, where have you been? As if I didn't know. All right, Helen, thanks. I'll see you in the morning. You do it now. Give yourself a chance to unwind. I'll do my best. Good night. Good night. Thank you. 
Hi. Doctor? Well, do either of you gentlemen happen to have a cigarette? Ah, uh -huh, thank you. Keep the pack, Doctor. Oh, no, no, no. I, I have to stop anyway. Thanks. Thank you. Right on the button tonight. Never a minute off schedule, never any surprises. Well, she doesn't have to worry about him walking in on her. Sometimes I wonder if maybe he doesn't know. How could he know? Well, as soon as it comes out that you're a writer, everyone's got a story for you. Some priceless little thing that happened to them during their lives. Sometimes their whole life story, which, of course, they would put down on paper if they could express themselves in writing. Thank you. So this great story idea that they've been hoarding for 20 years they give to you for nothing. You know what? I take it. I'm not proud. I'll use anything. <laughs> How about using this? Hey, right, Tom. What do you got there? 1951. What's happening to you? You acquiring taste? Must have rubbed off from Joanne. I remember when we were in college, you always seemed more like a fellow student than our brand new professor. Except, of course, your idea of a high old time, which was to sit at <coughs> Shuby's den, drinking 3.2 beer and discussing heavy water. Why don't one of you fellows invent heavy booze? Then you would have something. Think we can make a bomb out of it? Why not? Imagine bourbon fallout. <laughs> I don't know if that's funny or not. What better way to get bombed? Well, a joke from our leader. A pun on the sacred subject. It's your influence. Well, in that case, maybe I'd better move in. You know, I studied General Sciences 103 with you. I think it's time you studied with me. Individual tutorial in intermediate savoir-faire. Well, here's to the new book. Oh, and my advances. May they ever increase. What's this one about, Bob? Have you read the last three? Yes. Then you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, remember Dolly Edwards? I do. She was in my chemistry class. Ah, that's what she had, chemistry. Really? I thought it was biology. Ooh, we're all making jokes tonight. Very funny. Did I ever tell you how I found her? I was uh, writing and directing the fraternity musical. I put an ad in the campus news. Wanted unabashed exhibitionist female for larger-than-life role in Delta Gamma show. No joke, eh, Tom? Well, he very rarely came out of the lab. Tom, are you all right? Oh, I'm uh, afraid I have to go into the study for a while. Oh, Tom, no. I'm sorry to be a rotten host, but something came up this afternoon. Does it absolutely have to be tonight? Another foolish question. Joanne, you must have some idea of the situation by now. Oh, yes, yes, I do. A very good idea. You're staying overnight, aren't you? I'd fully intend to do, but it's nice to be asked. Oh, see you in the morning, then. You know, it's amazing how little he's changed, really. He was always obsessed with the idea of doing something great. And now he's doing it. Bravo, bravo. You tease him. Yeah, well, he likes it. He always did. Tom was marvelous the first 12 years of our marriage. He really was. You must have worked miracles with him. There's, there's a Tom you've never seen. So buried under all the other things, the ambition, the idealism. I don't think you really know him. Yeah, but I know his wife. You didn't think I was so much in college. One date and I was forgotten. Well, in those days, I was more interested in quantity than quality. Bob, no. Tom's right here. No, he's in the study and he's not coming out. 
I know you wish to have any word, but he's not going to. What is it? Tom Howard. Sorry to bother you, but I need the comprehensive file. 281. Well, can it wait until tomorrow? You're the last person I thought I'd hear that from. Look, I am working late and I need it for reference. All you have to do is to call Lewis at security and authorize him to open the filing cabinet for me. Well, it has been done before, you know. I can't do that. What do you mean you can't do it? All it takes is a phone call. Howard. Why don't you go home? Get some rest. Look, Tom, I'm on the verge of something here. If I'm right, you'll have facts and figures for Sorbin next week. You let me worry about Dr. Sorbin. Now you just do as I tell you. Go on home. Am I to consider that an order? That's right. Good night, Howard. Joanne? She's gone up to bed. Oh. Hold it a minute, Bob. Okay, come in. Oh, a fire. Nice. It's a lovely room. You should open it up more often. I thought we could have a nightcap. Oh, I'm glad you stopped by. You always had a genius for doing the right thing at the right time. Sure. I bring the brandy, you save the world. You know, you look tired. I'll live. It's too bad you can't take things easier. Well, I'll take things easier when my job is done. When will that be? Well, when men voluntarily lay aside their means of trying to destroy each other. You really think that super weapons will make that happen? Without the alternative of total destruction, there can be no possibility of permanent peace. Well, I don't know about that. The world is done without permanent peace for a couple of million years. I think they could wait while you took a couple of days off. I'm not joking, Bob. I know you're not. That's why I'm worried. Now, suppose you got sick. Somebody else would have to take over. I'll let you in on a secret. No one's going to push me aside on this project, no one. It's my project. I've been with it longer than anyone else, and no one believes in it as totally as I do. You should never believe in anything totally. Or anyone. Do you mind, Bob? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll bet that's what you do with all my books. Bob, I'm awfully tired. May we go? Oh, sure. you were asleep. Uh, I was just dozing, waiting for you. Bob and I were having a little talk. Oh? About what? Just Gab. He's a more thoughtful person than I remembered him being. Well, he's older. Maybe that has something to do with it. I never figured he'd be here over two months. He never stayed anywhere longer than that. Maybe he enjoys the change. As you say, he's older. Aren't we all? <laughs> oh, good night, dear. Tom. 
Yes. Do you love me? You know I do. No. I used to know it, but... I can't reach you anymore. You belong to the project, not to me. Joanne, this project is probably the most important in the world. In the world. I know, I know. You... I'm sorry, you can tell me that, but I... I just can't grasp it. I'm a woman with an ordinary mind. All I know is that the man I married has somehow disappeared. I don't know what I can tell you. I'm locked in. Wish I could say things will be different, but I can't. Do you know what I wish, honestly? I wish you'd fall down and break your leg or, or get scarlet fever or something. Then at least I could take care of you. I don't know where I fit into your life anymore. Do you need me at all? Yes, of course I do. Tom, take a week off. Let's go somewhere. We'll drink too much and dance too much and, and generally behave like a couple of average human beings. I can't. Not next week. Then the week after? No, not then either. Well, then when? Three weeks, five weeks? For my birthday. That's two months off. I'd like to. I just can't promise. Tom, I need a date. Just name a day. Any day. You choose it. Joanne, this is a crucial phase. Maybe when it's over, we could take a little time then and... Yes, maybe. Or maybe by then you'll have found another super, super project that you're indispensable to. Another reason to feel that the country and the world can't get along without you. I think they can. But I know I can't. Oh, darling, please be patient. I know we'll be husband and wife again. Husband and wife? <laughs> wife and machine. A two-legged computer. That's what my, my friend, sweetheart and husband has become. Oh, the company lets it come home at night to eat and rest up for the next day. But you don't even do that. You go into that, that study of yours, that, that think tower and... Tom, do you realize there was a week once when we lived together in this house and never spent a waking moment with each other? Oh, when was the last time we talked? Except for, hello, how are you, and goodbye. Joanne, I don't understand. I thought you realized how important, how vital this project was, and how very much depends on me. Do you think I, I really want to work this way? Always on call, never any time for myself, never any time for my wife? Don't you know I'd rather be with you? No. You don't want me. You, you'd rather have your breakfast looking at a picture of yourself on a magazine cover. Thomas Clay, guardian of the future. All I want is, is a little of your time, a part of you, something to share. But you make me feel like I'm betraying the national interest. Well, then, Joanne, please be patient. Wait a little bit. Give me a little time, please, and wait a little while. Wait? I've waited out three years on this project. And when this one's over, there'll be another one. You'll see to that. There will be another one, won't there, Tom? Tom, where are you going? Downstairs. Oh, can't it wait? I'm trying to talk to you. I'm sorry. Please try to get some sleep.
Congratulations, Tom. I guess you caught yourself a thief. A thief? Or a spy? A spy. You know, I never quite thought of it that way before. Spy. Hmm, spy. Of course, that's a three-letter word with an enormous oversimplification. Hadn't you better close the door? Voices carry at this time of night. But how did you... Oh, the safe. Well, I'm thoroughly schooled in matters of that kind. Listen, would you... Uh... Would you, uh, care for brandy? Huh? Well, this is insane. You couldn't have all this time. Couldn't have? I did. Of course, I admit you were a great help. It never occurred to me that you'd start smuggling top secret documents out of the center and bringing them home. In other words, you've been so careful. You never mentioned what you were working on, what you were doing, not even to your wife or me, your best friend. Ooh. But why? Tell me, why? Well, I'm a pragmatic man, if nothing else. My employers pay me a great deal of money. Money? Sure. You don't... Oh, no. No politics, no philosophy. Money. I wonder if you have any idea the price your current activities bring on the international market. I, I'll be honest with you. It's not just the money. I mean, part of it's the game. Oh, the game. You know, the world isn't going to end with your bomb. That's happening right now. Slowly. From boredom. Just look all around you. You know, a lot of people, they travel all over the place. They gamble their self-respect on a roll of the dice. But not me. I make a total commitment. Why, you lose at my game, you lose all the way. But if you win, oh, not just money. In there. Traitor, Bob. I'm turning you in. Don't do it, Tom. I'm sorry. You call them in here, you'll destroy yourself. You call them in here, you will destroy yourself, the project, and everything you've been working for. You have me arrested, and it will have to come out that you broke security by bringing home classified material. Huh? It will have to come out that your frequent and recent house guest was the paid agent of a foreign power. Oh, listen, that would make you a big, fat security risk. The zealots would raise such a stink that the Defense Department couldn't keep you on if it wanted to. Now, why don't you just forget that you ever came down those stairs? Just forget this whole scene. I happen to be loyal to my country. Well, then do what's best for your country. Look, what's more important, the arrest of one hack writer that turned out to be a spy or the continued work of the indispensable Dr. Thomas Clay? Your government needs you. Ruin yourself and you're taking a weapon away from your country, a valuable weapon. You. The man who set up the research center. You. The one man who holds the whole thing together. You had this all figured out. You think I'd aid a spy to protect myself? All right, if not yourself, what about the 200 million people whose preparedness depends upon you? Just sudden concern for the national welfare. Tom, you're far too intelligent not to realize it's the only sensible alternative. Okay, you let your patriotic emotion overcome you. Shout at your friends across the lawn. But a few weeks, a few months from now, when you've been ostracized from the scientific community, you're gonna wish you'd been a little more objective. You used me, and now you're trying to use me again. Look, I'm... I'm leaving the country tomorrow. I won't bother you anymore. What's done is done. Punishing me is gonna solve nothing. Now, there's the film. Come on. No harm done, right? Yes, Cowell. I'm sorry to bother you, Doctor. Is everything all right? I saw you at the study window. Yes, everything's fine. Well, it's just that I thought everyone had gone to bed. Uh, Mr. Burke and I were just having a talk. I was just leaving. Well, I guess we settled everything, didn't we, Tom? Huh? Good night. Good night. Well, I'm uh, sorry to bother you, Doctor. Yes, Cowell, you said that. Good night.
I don't understand why Bob left last night. Just changed his mind, decided to go home, that's all. Well, everything's all right, isn't it? I mean, there wasn't any trouble. Of course not. Why should there be any trouble? Good morning. You were late. We were wondering if everything was all right. Do you have to keep such close tabs on me? Well, I'm sorry, sir, if you feel you've been under too close a surveillance. No, no, it's just that I seem to have very little privacy around here. I understand we sometimes seem to intrude on you, but you are a very important man. We can't afford to have any harm come to you. I guess not. Well, I'll, I'll be going directly to the lab as soon as I shave and get dressed. Mr. Cowell, would you like a cup of coffee? Yes, thank you. You seldom come in. My husband seems to see you everywhere he goes. You're quite thorough. We try to be. I was never quite sure. Are we all watched, or only my husband? Well, he's the prime subject. Sometimes I, I get the feeling I'm being followed. Is it my imagination? There have been instances when we've assigned men to you on uh, an extended trip or after a suspicious incident. Not on your part, of course. But our office reports to us whenever someone considered possibly dangerous is in the area. And we assign extra men to cover the dependents. Only then? And never out of curiosity? We mind our own business, Mrs. Clay. Must get boring after a while, just sitting in a car waiting for something to happen. We get assigned to rougher jobs when our turn comes. If you ever find it necessary to have me followed again, please notify me first. If it make you feel better, yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'll wait outside for your husband. Thanks for the coffee. Tom, what's on? Uh, morning, Howard. I've been looking for you everywhere. It's nearly 10.30. You were down here, I guess. That's right. Feeling better this morning? I didn't know I'd been sick. Well, you certainly didn't sound like yourself over the phone last night. May I have that file now? Uh, come in in about 15 minutes. Well, come in now, if that's all right with you. I trust you don't mind my trying to do some work today. Howard, why don't you come in late some morning? I mean it. It would warm my heart. Well, I'm sorry if my conscientiousness offends you, Tom. Tom doesn't offend me, Howard. I'd just like to see you live a little. Uh, good morning, Howard. Strange thing to hear coming from you. Oh, by the way, have you seen that letter of commendation from the Senate committee? Uh, uh, Helen, show Dr. Link the letter, will you please? I saw the letter, Tom. Oh, I don't think you've seen this one. Your name was mentioned. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, Howard. Good morning, General. Is he in? Yes. Is that 281? Uh, yes. Are you going to be using it? Well, uh, not right now. Dr. Link. Now, do we understand each other, young man? Of course, sir. Tom, let's talk. All right. What's going on here? In what way? Howard called me at home at 11.30 last night. Wanted me to authorize security to open your safe. What? He said you'd refused. What did you do? I told him I didn't believe in going over your head. At least not until after I'd had a talk with you. Thanks, Red. Now don't thank me, Tom. I'm not through yet. I want to know from you why you prevented the man from doing his work. 
I told him to go home. He's been working very hard. Oh, come on, Tom. Shall I tell you your real reason? I'd be interested to hear. You seem to feel that the people who are helping you here are really your competitors. That's not so. But let me tell you something, Tom. We've got a time limit here. Anyone qualified is eligible to help. And by the same token, no one is indispensable. Is that a threat, Red? A threat? Well, you can take it any way you want. All I'm saying is that we're all human beings here, Tom, trying to do a job together. And the man who thinks that he's above that is of no use to us. You think about that. Oh, hello, Robert. Are you coming over? I was just fixing my hair. It's after one. I leave around three. Did uh, Tom say anything about last night? No, just that you decided not to stay. Good. Well, look, I'll see you in a few minutes. I have something special to tell you. You almost always do. is a poor choice of words. Taking a human life is murder. Doing it in mass is no less murder. But it's acceptable out of necessity. It's done in order to save all the more lives. <laughs> oh, sure. We fight wars for peace, blow up the human race to save lives. What do you think, Tom? Well, the whole argument is academic as far as we're concerned. A cobalt bomb isn't being built for use, but for non-use. It isn't a weapon of war. It's merely a presence to prevent war. And after it's been around a while, discussions like this will be immaterial. Sir, there's a phone call for you. Oh. Yes. Uh, Dr. Clay, uh, this is Nicholas down in the photo lab. Sir, on that uh, film you sent down... Yes, what about it? Well, sir, this film is... It's never been exposed. It was wound up and sealed, but take my word for it, it's never been used. Of course it's been used. I know it's been used. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Either there's something wrong with the camera, or um, perhaps you got this film mixed up with another one. Yes, that must be it. Must be another film. Thank you. Well, if there's anything else I can do, sir. No, no, no. Thank you very much. The hardest part of any killing is the rationalization. That it's just as easy for one person to kill another as it is for one nation to blow up another. Now, the tough part is the mental work. The adjustment to the idea that you are indeed going to take a human life. Setting aside of all civilized rules of order. Ed was saying that faced with the alternative of defeat ourselves, we would rationalize the use of the most powerful weapon we had. If it's a case of destroy or be destroyed, we would destroy. Now you've got to admit that we would. Yes, I suppose we would, if we were about to be destroyed. Tom? Where are you going, Tom? He left his whole lunch. Where is it? Why well, go to Mexico now? I'm researching my new book. Has it something to do with last night? Bob, don't make me beg for the truth like I have to do with him. Tell me. Well, we were talking last night. Did you tell him about... About us? No, I was tempted to, but I couldn't. We had an argument. What started out as some pleasant reminiscing somehow became a discussion of moral values. He made it very clear that he didn't approve of me or anyone else who wasn't dedicated to the proposition that Thomas Clay was going to save the world. Well, what will I do? When will I see you again? Well, if you're a fast packer, you could be back here in about an hour, give or take a few minutes. You didn't think I was going to leave you behind, did you? Oh, Bob. Oh, Bob, I... I can't. 
Why can't you? What are you leaving behind? A sterile house. Loneliness. Tom locked up in a room with his obsession torturing himself. That's why not. Don't you see? Look, I see that you're a woman made out of flesh and blood, and it's time you started treating yourself that way. Come with me. Make the break now. In the end, it'll be better for everyone. Are you all right? Of course. Why wouldn't I be? I called you at the lab. Helen said you'd gone out. I came home for some papers. Tom, I, I want to talk to you. Well, I can't stop now. I'm in very much of a hurry. Tom, listen to me. For once, don't run away. I'm sorry, but we must make it later. What I have to do just can't wait. Well, what I have to do can't wait either. I called you from Bob's. I called to tell you I'm leaving. I thought you might have something to say. You called from Bob's? He's flying to Mexico City today. He's asked me to leave with him. And I'm going. You and Bob? Goodbye, Tom. Take care of yourself. I hope that... Well, whatever it is you're looking for... I hope you find it. Sorry, I... I know that what you have to do must be important if you say so. It's just that I can't live with it. It's my fault, not yours. No, the fault is mine. I know it's late, but I want to ask you for another chance. Oh, Tom, don't say that. Not just because it's what I've wanted to hear. And Joanne, something happened yesterday. I made a mistake, a terrible mistake, and I've... I've got to set it right some way. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. There's even a chance that we may have to start all over again. When the going gets this rough, it tends to break a man's ivory castle into pieces. So anyway, here I am, feeling very small and very bare. I know I haven't any right to say this to you. It's like an atheist who calls a priest to his deathbed. But I need you, Joanne. I couldn't bear to lose you. Look, can you... can you tell me what it is, this... trouble you're in? No, I can't tell you anything now. What about Cowell and Chester or... or, or General Brockman? Can't they help you? No, I have to set this right by myself. So please, don't do anything. But just say that... You'll be here when I come back. 
That's all. Just say that much. All I really wanted was to be asked. I must insist. Where is he? I'm sorry, gentlemen. I'd tell you if I knew, but I don't know where Tom is. Mrs. Clay, your husband took elaborate pains to lose us downtown. Now, why would he do that? If there's going to be trouble, we want to be on hand to help. Yes, yes, I told him that. If he's in danger, the whole project's in danger. Do you realize that? I told you, he was home, but I don't know where he's gone. Got your call, Chester. Thanks. Joanne, do you want to tell me what's happening? Let's go into the study. We'll be taking along another passenger. Another passenger? Don't worry about it. I'm sure you can fly the plane as well with two as with one. Why take the chance? Because it pleases me. So that's the, that's the whole story, Red. Honey, I'd be more discreet if I had the time, but I don't. I want you to tell me just what Tom said when you told him the perk was waiting for you at the airport. <laughs> he didn't say anything. Nothing? Nothing at all? Oh, he just said that... that he, he had to set things right. Himself. I think we'd better get out there as fast as we can. Passenger? No, no, it isn't. Keep working. Oh, well, this is unexpected. Not altogether a pleasure, I might add. I want the film, the one with the pictures on this time. I gather my other passenger isn't coming along. She told you I'd be here, huh? I said I want that film. Oh, well, you lost out in that department last night. But I'll pay you. Sell it to me instead. You couldn't pay me what it's worth. Besides, I want you to take all the zing out of it for me. Now, why don't you just run along home before you bring a lot of trouble on yourself? Well, if I have a gun, I'll use it if I have to. <laughs> no, you won't do that. You won't do anything. Because if you do, the whole story will come out. No, you let me go, me and the film. And in that way, the illustrious name of Thomas Morton Clay can hurtle unimpeded towards that international prominence that's so dear to your egocentric heart. I can think of no greater humiliation than to be understood by a man like you. Oh, and I do understand you. Because, you see, you're just like I am. International peace? The bomb? Huh? Patriotism? No. You traded all that away for just a couple of little paragraphs in the history books. No, the difference between you and me, you know what it is? I know what I am. I don't think you know what you are. You're surely not going to change in the next few minutes. So goodbye, keep up the good work, and don't worry. Bob, stop. Bob! You're a man of peace, right? I mean, you make bombs that overkill, but with a gun in your hand face to face with a man, oh, I don't believe you. I'm sorry. <laughs> thought you'd step out of character. But it's all for nothing because the film is in my bag on the plane. 
This man is a spy, and I helped him. Better stop that plane. I'll be in my office tonight, Tom. I'm afraid there may be some unpleasantness. I'll be there. We'll both be there.